Now is it just me, or is this new planar damage mechanic a bit confusing? And you know, talking about it in passing at the end of the official update video here probably didn't help any of you either. But that's fine, as I know more now and want to share it with ya. And briefly mention a neat thing or two about the new Bright Shade crap, of course. But let us truly begin with Don't Starve Together's freshest damage modifiers, planar damage, aka armor piercing everyone. We noted at first how strange it was that the game said that these Bright Shade swords dealt 38 damage damage, only for them to be a dark sword essentially, and that's because they are, with a little twist that is. Take for example, an actual dark sword's damage against an armored pigman, and all is going to be normal considering a football helmet's 80% damage reduction of course, but enter this very same scenario with a bright shade sword, and it might get a bit odd numbers wise, but there is a simple explanation for this 38 damage you see, as there is a flat 30 planar damage mechanic. The armor reduces the 38 from the sword itself to roughly 7.6, but adds the 30 piercing damage to equal what we have here. It's interesting stuff. The only problem I have with it is that it doesn't work for all other armor reductions in this game. And that's the problem. Why add armor piercing for nothing but the new rift stuff? And no, damage modifiers do not impact planar damage. It is a flat 30 hit points no matter what. But I digress, as planar damage is actually the easy one to understand. Planar defense is also now at play, folks, and it gets far more complicated. Maybe not so much in the case of player armor, as the Bright Shade stuff acts completely normal with all other weapons when factoring in their 80% reductions each, and only adds an additional 10 points of damage reduction against a Bright Shade sword. And if you have no idea what the bloody heck I'm going on about, it's just down from the 37.6 damage we saw previously, as again, the 10 planar defense is subtracted from the would-be totals overall, but in short, the armor defends against piercing with a flat 10 hit points reduced per hit. But once we get to the plain or defense of the deadly bright shades themselves here, I sort of lose the plot a little bit. Not fully, as it appears these plants deal a flat 30 plain or damage a hit themselves, just like we do with the swords. However, their base 100 damage makes things far more dangerous. Heck, even a 90% damage reduction headpiece still sees us taking 40 damage a hit no matter what due to that very piercing of these things. But where a bright shade helmet and that piercing damage falls to 20 flat instead, which should also come out to 40 damage taken overall. However, these plants are also lunar based, therefore an additional 10% reduction is at play due to wearing these armor pieces. Meaning we only take about 35 damage in this particular case. Wear both pieces for the set bonus of 25% lunar damage reduction, and you'll take 17.5-ish damage a spike. In short, the bright shade armor helps, but not by much, honestly. But for the stuff I truly don't understand yet, comes the actual planar defense of these mobs themselves. Anything that doesn't pierce, which is pretty much anything that isn't the new bright shade stuff, has its damage reduced by quite a lot, as you can see. Although I don't have the exacts, as again, I'm not even sure how this all bloody works myself. However, the piercing of the bright shade sword helps it deal 47-ish damage, so the planar defense must be pretty low. Forgive me if this latter, or heck, maybe all of this nonsense makes little sense, as trust me, I'm kinda a little confused about it still too. So let us wrap up the day with what we do know, yes, with a few extra tidbits just learned. All the cool new gear can only be smithed via the bright smithy here, craftable from within any celestial altar and or the celestial orb. But in order to craft one, we will need one of the new materials found solely in Don't Starve Together's newest rifts, so either kill the the Celestial Champion and wait, or force your game to start generating these rifts via these world settings here. But note that they must be off default in order to bypass the Celestial Champion path. Whatever the case may be, eventually a rift will form somewhere in your world, and while they will start off small and perhaps undetectable even, they will get bigger, a map marker will automatically appear, and if you have yet to find one, the game will actually literally warn you about it, so keep an eye out. But head to one, bring a really good pickaxe mind, mine these rift stoles, and pure brilliance will be yours for the future.
And these are the easy bits for sure. Stick around for a while though, as we'll also need to manage these deadly bright shades that we've been seeing all flippin' day, as we'll need their bright shade husks as well. As all seven bright shade crafts require both, which I can already see being an absolute pain considering just how many we actually need, so do yourself a favor and wear a construction amulet, craft a crap ton of bright shade staves, deconstruct them, and then only go from there. Heck, this is post end game content after all, so abuse the systems at will. But abuse them for what you ask? Well, on top of all that planar crap, Bright Shade Swords also deal 10% more damage than Nightmares, while also benefiting from the set bonus of Bright Shade Armor for yet another 10% increase. So there you go. The armor itself also reduces lunar damage taken by 10% each, which increases to 25% when both are worn, so make notes. The Bright Shade Bombs are easily the best part of this update, as we get 6 per craft, and each one deals a whopping 200 damage each, although do be aware that they do damage other players and ourselves for the time being. The staff is pure garbage with its 50 uses and 10 damage a hit, but that does climb to 20 if used on nightmares, and a full bright shade set does bump that ever so slightly higher to 22 overall as you can see. The bright shade pickaxe is literally just a pickaxe that does indeed work against the nightmare wear pig pillars, also deals more damage than advertised against shadows, and continues the trend of just being a bit better with a full suit to bright shade on. And finally, the shovel is just a glorified shovel that, yup, you guessed it, deals more damage to the nightmare mobs and their bosses while being boosted by the nightshade armor. So there seems to be a theme here, everyone. A rather simple one at that. But if that's the case, why on earth did you make planar mechanics a little strange and limiting clay? Just give the sword armor piercing for all armor across the game and it will immediately become so good and maybe simplify the planar defense of the bright shade plants a wee bit. Oh, and just buff everything you see here and give it all ties to enlightenment, the moon, and everything related to both, since none of it feels post end gamey at all. But thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish it to all. Feel free to ask more about Planor and all that stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.